For all those people that have an Xbox One and have been seeing all these videos about FNAF coming to the Switch, well, do I have good news for you? And for, I also have news for people on the Switch, but this is mostly about the Xbox One people. Oh, that's right. Click Team has released FNAF 1, well, they haven't released it. Oh, hey, hold on, let me back up, let me back up. For, <laughs> Click Team have released the store pages for FNAF 1 through 4 on the Xbox One Microsoft site. They're not out yet. We will see when they're out, though. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, before we get into the Xbox One store pages, though, I do want to follow up last video um, with the FNAF 4 Nintendo Switch page. So we're going to briefly look over that, and then don't worry, Xbox One players, we'll get to you very shortly. So here it is, of course, it's $8, November the 29th, 2019. T for teens, make sure you take good note of that, Copa. That's literally the second time <laughs> that I've mentioned them in videos. The last chapter of the Five Nights at Freddy's original story begins. Defend against Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and even worse things in the shadows. This time, the terror has followed you home. In this last chapter of Five Nights at Freddy's original story, you must once again defend yourself against Freddy, Chica, Pawnee, Foxy, and even worse things that lurk in the shadows. Wow, you literally just reused basically the exact same lines, guys. Playing as a child whose role is yet unknown, you must safeguard yourself until 6 a.m by washing the doors, as well as wandering off unwanted creatures, warding off unwanted creatures, sorry, that may venture into your closet or onto the bed behind you. Mm. You have only a flashlight to protect yourself. It will scare away things that may be creeping at the far end of the hallways, but be careful and listen. If something has crept too close, then shining light into its eyes will be your end. All this stuff that no one actually cares about, again, teen rating, go but take note, TV mode, tabletop mode, handheld mode, we, all, we already know about all that. And a new BB render, a new Nightmare BB render, so that's good. Surprise, surprise, the screenshots have absolutely zero controls. Thanks, Click Team, very nice. Alright, we're gonna move on to the Xbox One players. You guys have waited long enough for this video. Here it is. Welcome to your new summer job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where kids and parents alike come for entertainment and food, as far as the eye can see. The main attraction is Freddy Fazbear, of course, and his two friends. There are animatronic robots programmed to please the crowds. The robots' behavior has become somewhat unpredictable at night, however, and it was such cheaper and it was much cheaper to hire you as a security guard than to find a repairman. From your small office, you must watch the security cameras carefully. You have a very limited amount of electricity, and you're allowed to use per night. That you're allowed to use per night. I think I messed that up in the last video as well. Corporate budget cuts, you know. That means when you run out of power for the night, no more security doors and no more lights. If something isn't right, namely if Freddy Bear or his friends aren't in their proper places, you must find them on the monitors and protect yourself if needed. Can you survive? Five Nights at Freddy's. November 29th. It's the same as the Switch uh, release date. Something that's interesting though, <laughs> I say that every time, but honestly it is. Um, there's achievements, which is awesome. There's all the stuff you don't really care about, but you should probably care about, like approximate size, whatever. And there's also new features. Get this, monitor cameras, ensure safety of equipment and animatronic characters. We know that. Jump scares and loud noises. We know that. Ability to pause the freaking game and, and contemplate life choices. That's awesome. Extra modes available after completing your first week. I'm guessing that's talking about night six, night seven, and end. I don't even know if you can do night eight, actually. I don't think you can do night eight on the ports. I'm just gonna say it outright. Because they are ports, I'm guessing after the first week, that means after the first five days. So I don't think they're gonna add like a secret ninth or tenth night. That, they're not gonna do that. It's talking about night six and night seven. Uh, controller support with both the analog stick and directional pad. Cheats to make gameplay easier at the cost of disabling achievements. That is actually kind of cool. I, I like that a lot. I, I like that feature a lot. Um, unless I'm blind, I don't see a price tag for it. I'm guessing it's gonna be $8 like every other FNAF port and FNAF on Steam and FNAF on mobile. 
I'm guessing everything's gonna be eight dollars. FNAF 2, uh, again, November 29th, uh, here's the size, and let's take a look at these, we know about that, uh, ability to pause again, uh, night 6, night 7, uh, ability to toggle the aspect ratio, that's interesting, that's really interesting, uh, cheats and, and lockstick and directional pad support, we know about all that, so, let's read the description. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the old and aging animatronics are joined by a new cast of characters, they are kid friendly, updated with the latest in facial recognition technology tied into local crim criminal databases. If you guys are new, I suck at reading. I feel like I have to explain that in every video. Everyone should know this by now. And promise to put on a safe and entertaining show for kids and grown-ups alike. What could go wrong? As the new security guard working nights, your job is to monitor the cameras and make sure nothing goes wrong after hours. But nothing's supposed to go wrong. Hmm, that's weird. The previous guard has complained about the characters trying to get into his office. He has since been moved to the day shift. So, to make your job easier, you've been provided with your very own empty Freddy Fazbear head, which should fool the animatronic characters into leaving you alone if they should accidentally enter your office. As always, Fazbear Entertainment is now responsible for death or dismemberment. Awesome. Moving on to FNAF 3. Again, $8, I'm guessing. I'm blind and I don't see it anywhere, but every other thing, every other port, every other game has been $8. It's gonna be $8, trust me guys, trust me. Not gonna lie, I'm low-key kinda digging this, uh, this box art right here. I don't know why, it's just my favorite out of all of them. They all do have all of this, I should mention it. Here's the approximate size, again releasing on November the 29th. Bond with the cameras, yep, yep, yep. Multiple endings, we know about that. Extra modes available, yep, we know that. Uh, toggle the aspect ratio, and then analog stick. No, um... What's it called? <laughs> Again, I'm not an Xbox dude. No directional pad this time, which is interesting. 30 years after Freddy Fazbear's pizza closed its doors, the events that took place there have become nothing more than a rumor and a childhood memory. But the owners of Fazbear's Fright, the whole attraction, are determined to revive the legend and make the experience as authentic as possible for patrons, going to great lengths to find anything that might have survived decades of neglect and ruin. At first, there were only empty shelves, a hand, a hook, an old paper plate doll, but then, a remarkable discovery was made. The attraction now has one animatronic. Ooh, very, very creepy, very creepy. All right, moving on to FNAF 4. I think this is my least favorite one out of all of them. I don't know why. I think it's just because the red title on red background, it just, it doesn't suit for me. I don't know, that's just my opinion though. Here's the size, again, November 29th, you guys should know this by now. Ability to look behind you, and everything else is still the same. Monitor doorways. I like how they didn't change it from monitor the cameras. They just went to <laughs> monitor the doorways, guys. Ensure safety of bedroom and toys. You gotta keep track of that uh, cal caterpillar toy and that purple robot. Make sure that they're really safe, boys. And again, no directional pad uh, controller support, which I don't know why they got rid of that for the third or fourth game. Anyways, this time, the terror has followed you home. In this last chapter of Five Nights at Freddy's original story, you must once again defend yourself against <laughs> Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and even worse things that lurk in the shadows. Ah, uh, I think I've noticed a trend here when it comes to the description of these ports. It's almost as if I've read them all before. Playing as a child whose role is yet unknown, you must safeguard yourself until 6am by watching the doors, as well as warding off unwanted creatures that may venture into your closet or onto the bed behind you. You have only a flashlight to protect yourself. It will scare away things that may be creeping out at the far ends of the hallway, but be careful and listen. If something has crept too close, then shining lights in its eyes will be your end. <laughs> we literally just read that. Okay, all of these are coming out November 29th. Uh, FNAF 1 through 4 on the Switch and the Xbox One are coming out on November the 29th. All those PS4 players, we haven't really heard anything for you just yet. Unfortunately, sorry about that. Ha! <laughs> Look at you. You thought the video was over, dummy. There's still more to cover. Uh, literally, the day before I was gonna upload this video, so uh, last night for you guys, Click Team actually released a trailer showing some gameplay footage for FNAF 1, 2, 3, 4 for the Nintendo Switch 
the Xbox One, and the PS4. So, I've already seen it, so we're gonna do a very, very, very quick analysis of it. Trust me, it won't take super long. And thankfully, for all you PS4 players, there has been a release date for the games on PS4. As you'd expect, I'm not gonna <laughs> force you guys to wait. It is November 29th. So tomorrow, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4 will all be getting FNAF 1 through 4 on the consoles, which is super exciting. Uh, let's not waste any more time, very quick analysis of the trailer, and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, here we go, T for teens, obviously, we've seen that all the time. Warning, flashing lights, loud noises, lots of jump scares, we know about that. Five Nights at Freddy's. So we're gonna watch it through all the way once, and then we'll go back in and uh, look over it. Okay, we've got all the characters in the FNAF 1 area. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there is not really much to theorize about, uh, and to analysis, analyze, whatever, because it is simply just gameplay footage of things that we've seen already. There are interesting things to take note of, for example, there are no cameras and, um, mask bars in the second game for some reason. Also, these new title sequences for the game, absolutely phenomenal. A little bit of controls here and there, uh, for example, coming up right now. We have seen those already, so not really much to talk about there. Video error. Yep, let me turn this down a little bit. Sorry, guys. Phantom Foxy jumps here. Springtrap running past the window. Nightmare on. Or not Nightmare on, sorry. Phantom Puppet. FNAF 4. Chica, Plus Trap, Foxy. Uh, Freddles. Bonnie. And then finally. Honestly, I love this end sequence. I just love how all four of the games just slide into view. Like, look at that. So starting off, we got T for Teens, and that's basically it. Um, I don't think, yeah, all that classic stuff. Get a new intro sequence for Five Nights Fridays. Actually, no, that's from the original trailer, right? Uh, there's no controls here. Yeah, no controls in FNAF 1. And then we move on to FNAF 2, which I think this is also straight from the FNAF 2 trailer. Um, again, there's no bars for some reason. You can take note. Actually, you probably can't. My <laughs> face cam's in the way. Hold up. Take note that Bonnie's guitar is no longer the classic V shape that it was originally. It's it's because of copyright reasons, guys. Uh, I know a lot of people are complaining about it, that it just looks so bad. But honestly, there's not much that they can do. I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal because it is simply a guitar. We barely even see Bonnie with a guitar. With, a, with his guitar anyway, so, like, it, it doesn't matter, guys. It's literally a copyright is issue. There's not much that they could have done. I think this is probably the best thing that they could have done. Um, because, obviously, we don't want them to get sued. Trust me, guys, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. I don't know why people are freaking out so much about it. Uh, did I mention this? There's no bullets. I think I did. All right, then we move on to... I think they're sorting through the cameras at one point. Yeah, so obviously there's going to be buttons to turn on the lights. And then, here's some stuff. <laughs> Again, it's not very interesting. I mean, it's stuff we've seen already. I really, really love this title sequence for FNAF 3. Just look at that. That's awesome. And then this is where it gets intense. So, LB. I do have my little Switch controller here so I can show you guys some of the controls. I mean, I would show you the controls for the Switch if I was looking at the right controller, that is. Um, this is Xbox One controllers. Uh, now, I don't actually own an Xbox One, so to, sh so to show you guys this, I'm gonna be using this old, very dusty Xbox 360 controller. The left bumper, uh, which is what LB stands for, is right here. It's the bumper on the left side of the controller just as a visual for those people that don't have a Xbox One controller. Let me look over, and again, A, B, we know where those are, we've already been through this uh, in another video. A's right here, B's right here, very, very simple. And then we get a jump scare, which I really, really like. Oh, oh, we can see that right here, LB is also to open the, uh, just to open the monitor. So I'm guessing that's probably what it's going to be with every console, though I can't say for 100%. Yeah, and then we get Phantom Foxy. Man, look at that. These are all ripped straight from the PC games, by the way, guys. So these are literally exactly cop exact copies of the PC. 
We've got a jump scare. We see Springtrap running across the screen. Oh, look at him. Look at him running. Then we get Phantom Puppet. We can see Phantom Freddy in the background. This Five Nights at Freddy's 4 logo, I don't really like too much. I'm not gonna lie. I think it... It just... It doesn't look good in my opinion. Alright. I don't think there's any controls here. My god, can we turn down this volume? Also, uh, 8 a.m. guys. <laughs> Someone tweeted that out, um, a few days ago, which I don't know how they managed to see that, seeing as the trailer didn't come out till now. But yeah, 8 a.m. guys. Take, take note of that. And then we get all the covers. You know, now available on Switch, Xbox One, PS4, even though they're not until the 29th. Even the title freaking says that. And then we get all of the covers just next to each other. And that is, that is it. So, pretty bad analysis of the trailer. I don't, I'm sorry guys, there's not much to go over. We've practically seen all of this already. I at least wanted to mention it and briefly go over it like we did now, even though I'm recording for 10 minutes. Because I know some, there are gonna be some people in the comments that are like, you know, they released a trailer, why don't you do an analysis video on that? Simply because it's stuff we've already seen before. You know, it's not a new game, it's literally the first four games which we have all seen. So, I at least wanted to briefly skim over it because there were at least one extra control that we did not know, which was the left bumper. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, the ports for you guys come out tomorrow on the 29th. Stay on the lookout for that. All of them are going to be costing $7.99 American. And, you know, Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, 1 through 4 on November 29th. No exact release dates for all of the other ports just yet, though you definitely, definitely expect every single FNAF game to be on Xbox One, PS4, um, Switch, uh, iOS, and Android by the end of this year. And a lot of people are saying that this is fake. I know I probably shouldn't have mentioned this at the end of the video, where most people, where people aren't gonna see it, but these are not fake. I don't know why people think these are fake. Scott, right, he literally said in a Steam post and several times on like Reddit and stuff like that, that he's been working with Click Team to make all of these ports. FNAF 1 through Sister Location were already on iOS and Android before all of this even happened, and people knew that they were made by Scott, so why is it a surprise now that there's more ports? I, I just don't understand why people don't think this is real. It is real. This is the official profile for Click Team on YouTube and on Twitter and on everything else like Reddit. They are real people. Get that in your brain. Scott has literally said this so many times. How are people so out of the loop? Sorry about that. Just wanted to get something off my chest. Anyways, this video has gone on for way longer than it should have. So I'm just going to end it here. Thanks for watching. Uh, I probably won't be playing the ports on the channel just because they're the exact same thing as the first four games just on different devices. So, uh, yeah, I won't be doing that. But hopefully you guys have fun uh, playing all the games on your favorite consoles by yourself. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.